Chers auditeurs, Dear listeners, bonjour. Welcome in Comme d'Archi Podcast Season 4. Saison 4 dans le monde fascinant des architectes. And in the architectural projects. Je suis Anne-Charlotte de Ponte, passionnée d'architecture et docteur des universités en histoire de l'archi. I am one of the spokespersons of Anne Charlotte, who is a PhD in architecture history. Merci. Thank you. D'être avec moi aujourd'hui. To be with us today. Et And maintenant, now, lundi en français, place au talent. And Wednesday, let's talk projects. In English, of course. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Dear listeners, good morning. This is Esther on behalf of Anne Charlotte. It's good to meet you again in season 4 of Comme d'Archi, episode 32. Let's start by presenting Sébastien Lost and his interesting field of investigation. We will talk about the creation of experience in architecture. Of an architectural experience in particular, that of Rem Coulasse's Villa Le Moine. And we will see that these notions of experience, and especially of experience creation, are currently very present in digital design. We will also talk about another tool that architects can use, Midjourney's Artificial Intelligence. Finally, we will reflect on how these two tools, UX design and artificial intelligence, are changing our approach to design. Sébastien Lust is an architect by training. After having created a workshop of models and prototypes within a large Parisian architectural firm, Arte Charpentier, where he managed a team of a dozen designers and worked on several hundred architectural projects, Sébastien switched to the web world and became a digital designer. He designs digital tools such as websites and applications, notably for large web agencies and creative agencies. Today he works as a designer on projects that mix digital and physical, for example through service design projects also taking into account the user experience through new methodologies gathered under the name UX design. UX for user experience. In other words, user-centered design. Although UX design is now very common and widespread in the world of digital product creation, it is a design method that would have its place among architects. Even if the notion of experience, by its intangible character, seems to correspond to the virtual aspect of digital, we can see that architecture also knows this immaterial dimension. Indeed, when we talk about a need, a program, a brief, we are talking about something rather impalpable. The architect works above all with this material that is the idea. And even during the design process, the architectural drawing remains relatively virtual. Parallels can be drawn between digital design and architectural design. And we could imagine that UX design, which is nowadays very much used in digital design, could also be manipulated by architects. UX design consists in anticipating the experience that will be lived by the user which means that through methods coming from human sciences, namely sociology, psychology and ethnology, we will try to frame what are the uses, habits, needs, frustrations of the users. We will anticipate the context of use, the perception that users will have of our product or service. We will obtain information on the uses and habits of the users to think about the ergonomics of the product and, perhaps, even the meaning that this product will convey. These are notions that could easily be transposed to the world of architecture. UX design works in particular on psychological notions to establish the best way to design a product. In this, we can think of the way some architects use psychology to create buildings. Sébastien Lost studied Rem Coulasse's Villa Le Moine, built in the late 90s for Jean-François Le Moine, a man in a wheelchair. He became quadriplegic after a serious car accident. This house for this man and his family is very surprising. Where everyone expected a single-story house, the man being in a wheelchair, Rem Coulas proposes a house on three levels. And this house is crossed by a platform, which is a mobile room, the office of the client. 
all other movements in the house are made complex and almost painful, reversing the balance of power. The house becomes the world of the man in the wheelchair, while for other people the house becomes unwelcoming. Moreover, the perception of the house is astonishing. It seems like a kind of levitation, an unstable balance, a kind of physical impossibility. A gigantic monolith seems to float in the air in an unstable balance. Yet there is a trick, like in a magic trick. To play with our perceptions, Kulas uses design processes based on our cognitive biases, in order to show us an impossibility. The Villa Le Moine is an experience in the same way that the UX design used in digital projects seeks to create experiences. We can see here the link that could exist between the methods used in digital and the effects developed in some architectural projects. Sébastien Lost also tells us about Midjourney, an artificial intelligence tool that generates images based on a prompt, that is to say a simple sentence, a few words. Each image is generated in less than a minute. This tool produces quite amazing results and is starting to be used in design processes. In particular, thanks to a technique used by a few architects, still few in number, the use of a very simple image, a sketch, which is given to Midjourney, along with a few words. Thus, we could provide Midjourney with a simple sketch, showing the template, the shape, the scale of a building, and add to it a sentence such as, stone building in the manner of Zaha Hadid. And we would obtain an image of a stone building corresponding to the shape drawn in our sketch and which could have been designed by Zaha Hadid. Whether it's UX design or artificial intelligence tools, the question is, what good can we do with these tools? Today, we need to develop a new paradigm in all design professions. The current paradigm started at the end of the 19th century and doesn't make sense anymore. Design must respond to the challenges of its time and the challenges of today are clear. The question is, what paradigm can we create to get out of the existing models? More than ever, we need critical thinking. This gives the opportunity to the architect and designer to resume his role as a thinker who brings new solutions, new points of view, by deconstructing the established models. Sébastien Lost is a designer and architect by training. You can find him on LinkedIn or on superpositive.com. Dear listeners, thank you for tuning in. Let's meet again next week for a new Kamdashi in English. And until then, take care of yourselves. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. Thanks to Julien Robour, sound engineer, who is collaborating with us today. Don't forget to tune in to our previews on Instagram at Comdarchi Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, don't hesitate to promote it by giving it five stars and a little comment on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast platform. And above all, subscribe to listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon, and until then, take care of yourself.